with the 37th, with the 35th pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select McLeek McDowell, defensive tackle, Michigan State. Well, what a what a perfect player to get into Seattle and learn around some some great defensive linemen like Michael Bennett, Todd. This is a, a good place for him. Let's put it that way. Let's start off with a positive. I think Malik McDowell physically, from a talent perspective, is the best interior pass rusher in this draft, just in terms of his skills. He's long, 6'6", 295 pounds. He's fast. He ran a 4'8'5 at almost 300 pounds. It's ridiculous. 34 and three quarter inch arms, which is outstanding. And he, he, when he uses them properly, he does a great job like of that. keeping offensive linemen off his body. He explodes off the line. He's twitchy. He's a freakish athlete, as I said. And he has the bend in closing burst that you look for in an elite pass rusher. Now you put on the Notre Dame tape from this past year, and you say, wow. I mean, I'll take him in the top 10. You put on the tapes as they go in the seven game losing streak and each one starts to get worse and worse. So it's to me, this is all about how you manage him because the effort is up and down and really drives him crazy. Yeah, exactly, and he's going to the program where they'll manage him, but they'll allow him to be himself. But they're gonna try and get him to toe the line here. What they're gonna have to do first and foremost is kind of get him straightened out at defensive tackle because look, his stance right now, that's just not the stance you really want him in here as far as being able to get off the football and play the run here. And he's going to a place where they teach defensive linemen how to get off the rock, play the run on the way to the passer, but still play with gap integrity. They're going to have to get get on him to do that. They're going to have to get on him in order to play more sound fundamentally, play more consistent with pad level. You can't get blown off the ball like that against the double team. But I'll tell you what, this is a team now that had 42 sacks last year, but only seven of them came from players that lined up at deep tackle. That's exactly why they need this profile of player. This is the exact kind of place that can really take in free spirit like this and kind of shape him into what they want him to be. With well, a talent like that, you should not be a second round draft right. boys. You should be a top 10 pick. He was a classic underachiever midway through or until the end of the season. Well, th they handle free spirits pretty well in Seattle. Good. We'll see what happens there. He was the boom bust swing state. Self. With the 58 pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Ethan Posick, tackle LSU. I can just hear Seahawks fans everywhere saying, it's about time we invest in the offensive line and they get a good center, Mel. They do. Pat Elfline from Ohio State, I gave a little bit of an edge to as the top center in this draft. But Ethan Posick, you think about versatility, a three-year starter, 27 starts at center, nine at right guard, one at left tackle. He's 6'6", 310 pounds. He defines what a swing man will be in the NFL, versatile enough to play just about any spot in a pinch. Saw him get bull rushed. He doesn't play with the proper pad level all the time. Auburn game was bothersome in that game. Twice he allowed a defender to disrupt the play, not because of technique flaws, but because of concentration lapses. Now he's got talent. He flashed early round ability, but he lacked consistency. And I think Ethan Posick's value is going to be as a guy who can play a variety of positions. Todd. Yeah, I, I think with Posick, Posick, you have to look at 2015 tape two. He had a hip injury, suffered in August of 2016, and I think that's why his tape this past year wasn't quite as good. He is a smart football player. He tested extremely well on the Wonder Lick, and he just is, understands the game. Great experience, and he's a winner. I mean, the guy was 20, uh, 25 and 12 as a starter at the center position. He understands the game. Listen, Seahawks had the lowest number of cap dollars committed to the offensive line last year. They had to address it. Longhorns team. Meanwhile, Seattle. To announce the Se Seattle Seahawks selection. Please welcome from Purdue University, defensive end, Cliff Averill. With the 90th pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Shaquille Griffin, DP, DB from UCF. Okay, this is the rarest of rare. We've now had back-to-back -back picks of players who have twin brothers. Shaquille Griffin is the cornerback. He has a brother, Shaquem, who's a linebacker on the team. Yeah, six career interceptions for Shaq Griffin. He's got all the measurables you want. Good size, got loose hips, he can turn and go. He's got good ball skills, tackles with a purpose. Little inconsistent, I think what sent everybody back to the tape was at six foot 195, he runs a 4 3 8 tie, 40, 38 and a half vertical, 17 reps. You didn't always see that translate to the field. He had some big games, but he was up and down. But that combine workout, I think, got a lot of people attention. Yeah, it was an awesome workout. And I agree, the instincts 
they're kind of in, inconsistent with what you see on tape. But 28 passes break broken up, six interceptions the last two years. If he is coached well, Lewis, I think he's got a chance to develop into a really good player. 14.6 yards per punt return in his career. Seattle with the 95th pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. The Seattle Seahawks select Delano Hill, DB, Michigan. Well, we've seen a run on Michigan defensive backs now. First Jordan Lewis and now Delano Hill, the safety. This guy's tape grew on me as, as we continued to watch. Plus, I mean, there's like 11, 12 prospects on that Michigan defense that you're trying to sort through. And safeties are always hard because they don't have a ton of plays where they're at the point of attack. But Delano Hill, as I continued to watch, I liked his angles versus the run. He was really consistently around the ball and to me he's, he's a player that is going to come in doesn't have elite range has some tightness and coverage but I, I just think he's physical and he has the right mentality to contribute on special teams now ohio state and michigan state games Delano hill looked like a second round pick he just didn't always play think to that level but running that 4 4 7 40 at the combine at 6 1 2 16 certainly got everybody's attention all right, so we've had a couple of Delon uh, Michigan defensive backs come off the board. It just grows to what we've seen, the trend of this draft. DBs is the way to go. You look at the Seahawks, they're trying to beef up on defense. And the Seattle pick is in. Let's listen. Go Hawks. <laughs> With the 102nd pick in the NFL draft, the 27th NFL draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Nazir Jones, D tackle, North Carolina. Well. This is simply a remarkable story. The fact that this kid played college ball, let alone being drafted, is amazing. He woke up after playing a high school game in November of 2011 unable to stand. He couldn't understand why there was excruciating pain in his legs. He was diagnosed with complex regional pain syndrome, a chronic disease that affects the nervous system. When Larry Fedora, the North Carolina head coach, came for his recruiting visit, he had to say, Coach, can I sit down because my legs are in so much pain? Fedora believed in him, and boy, it has paid off. He's, this kid made it back and made it back big. He really did. 6'5 and a quarter, 305 pounds. This past year, he had a career high, 70 tackles. You watch him here, number 90, and athleticism that he shows for a big guy. Nine and a half tackles for loss, forced to fumble, broke up three passes, solid against the run all year. What you want to see is a little bit more big playability, getting into the backfield and getting some sacks. Had two and a half sacks this year, one hurry. You look at the Stanford game, you go through the year. Year. There were times where he flashed early round ability, but you know when you flash early round ability, Todd, you have talent. He has it. He can develop and become more consistent. Maybe Seattle find themselves at this point a defensive tackle who can get into the backfield down the road and help that defensive line. Yeah, he's a player to develop. The, old, the production you mentioned, just five sacks in 34 career games, but I thought he was a consistent one gap defender, did a really good job in the run game. You know, he is long levered, 34 and a half inch arms. He's got big big heavy hands and he really does a good job working off a box and can make some plays versus the run so I, I think there's some developmental upside and he could be an ascending player if Seattle develops him properly look he's got really good scheme recognition I think as far as the run game is concerned this guy understands blocking schemes understands yep. gap control understands hand use pad level it's just not going to always be flashy he's not going to be like Malik McDowell he's not that kind of player but they are accumulating profiles now for Seattle now picking with the 106 pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Amara Darbo, wide receiver, Michigan. Well, you want to talk about two back-to-back -back inspirational stories. Great story. It doesn't get much better than James Conner, followed by Amara Darbo. Darbo was born into chaos in Sierra Leone when tens of thousands of people, including both of his parents, died in that West African nation civil war from 91 to 2004, or 2002 rather, fights when civilians were forced to mine what are so-called blood diamonds or conflict diamonds. Relatives took care of him in Freetown, and then he fled to Gambia and Senegal. At the age of seven, he was adopted by a U.S. family. And then on September 24, 2015, Amara Darbo became a United States citizen. And that was just part of the best week of his life. He had an unbelievable catch on September 26, two days later, that led to a big Michigan win over BYU. What a story. What about the player? He comes into the year, and it's supposed to be J.U. Chesson is the 
star, the go-to guy, and Darbo just keeps showing up and keeps separating and finding a way to get late separation and then going up and making plays on the ball. Look at the body control and the ability to make your feet go dead on the sideline. He got better and better as his career progressed. He takes to hard coaching. He's a tireless worker, and he's a great blocker. So outside of elite top-end speed, and he ran better than expected. At 6'2", 214 pounds, he ran a 4.45 at the combine. Doesn't have elite speed on tape, but he's got everything else, Mel. I'll tell you what, I saw this guy run away from Shaquille Griffin. Yeah. When they played them early in the year. Yep. I mean, he's so he can go get.